Hi, my name is Malvika Sharan. I am the community manager of the Turing Way. And in the Carpentries, I'm the incident response chair for the Code of Conduct Committee. Hi, and I'm Karen Cranston, and I'm the governance chair for the Code of Conduct Committee. Today, we will give you an update from the Carpentries Code of Conduct Committee. We are also representing committee members, Karen Lagesson, Fosua Mishinu, and Masami Yabaguchi. We will discuss the general concept and code of conduct, then go into details of the Carpentries Code of Conduct, status and updates, and ask you to apply to join the Code of Conduct Committee. The Carpentries build a community around its shared vision and mission. This attracts people with differing experiences, backgrounds, and expectations. Project leads and representatives in the committee have the responsibility to build the culture that they want to promote. In regards with what we want in the project and what we don't want in the project to exist. If not, then the culture will develop without in alignment with the vision and mission that we want to achieve together. This means that we want to be upfront about what we want this community to be, what values we want to advocate, and how we want to treat each other. It is also important to remind that the project is more than its goal. There are people involved who use different languages, come from different backgrounds and identity, hold different expectation, have access to different tools. All these factors impact the norms we set and the pathway we build in the project to make decisions and build the project identity. All of these things affect the health of the community around the project and thus project itself. How do we go about setting a culture? There are two big things that we can do in the project in order to build a community participation, which is creating contribution guideline. The second is establishing code of conduct, which includes setting a reporting system as well as enforcing it community wide. For facilitating participation and contribution, Written guidelines are highly effective. They give ways for people with different background to decide how to get involved. One may argue that don't we have to focus on the product that we are building, such as the training material or infrastructure. In this context, it is important to remember that our contributors are people with their own worldview and their own histories. We need to take into consideration that when we are trying to build a community which is welcoming, people will know more about the community and the project that they want to participate in, and hence they will build the product that's mutually beneficial for everyone. Moving to the issue of code of conduct, the basis for this is that we want to have a well-functioning community. We need to take into consideration that other people in the project are not copies of ourselves. Especially in the carpentries, we are fortunate to have diverse members who represent multiple opinions and make our community stronger. Most of the time we get along well and agree with each other. But what happens if something goes wrong? This is where the code of conduct uh, document along with the different reporting procedure, report handling procedure, as well as governance come in play. A code of conduct is a set of, set of rules outlining the social norms, uh, rules and responsibility of an individual project, party or organization. A code of conduct does three big things. Invite people to our community, set clear expectation for the community members, and last but not least, probably most important, tells people what you care about in your community, what community culture, is important for you. The Carpentries Code of Conduct is a detailed list of documents that aim to ensure that people, despite their differences, know what the community culture we want to build, that we want to treat each other with respect, accept constructive criticism, rectify mistakes, and support each other. The Code of Conduct applies and governs all activities and convening, whether online or in person, including online calls, online chat plat platforms and in-person community conferences. It is committed to ensuring a fair system for reporting and report handling. These are transparent, transparently described, so a standard procedure is maintained. 
And it is developed over a year with the support of numerous community members, which ensures that we have integrated diverse perspective and concerns into the development process. Also, the Carpentries Code of Conduct uh, have become template for other open source community to build and apply code of conduct in their communities. So it's not sufficient to just have a code of conduct be a document that describes the desired and unacceptable behaviors that you want to see in your community. You also have to have policy and procedures around that for what happens if something goes wrong. Um, so the Carpentries Code of Conduct provides um, the additional information about how you report an incident, something that happens um, at a uh, event that you're part of, something that happens to you or somebody else. Um, so the, the Code of Conduct is more than just the set of expected behaviors, but it's all the policy, the procedures of what we do when something does go wrong, when someone behaves in a way that violates um, those policies and procedures. Um, so the first thing is, um, how do you report when something goes wrong? So the Code of Conduct uh, handbook on the website provides links to an incident report form, um, as well as email addresses if you're more comfortable reporting in that way. Um, so if you believe that somebody has violated the Code of Conduct during a Carpentries event or in one of our online spaces, um, we ask that you report it and give you a number of ways to do so. Um, if you're not sure if what you saw violates the Code of Conduct, you can report it. Um, so if something happens in one of our spaces that makes you or someone else uncomfortable, um, then let us know. And that's, that's the role of the Code of Conduct Committee. We examine those reports and decide if the behavior that's reported does um, violate the Code of Conduct. It's not your job as a community member to make that decision. Um, so again, we have multiple ways that you can do that. There's a incident response form that you can fill out and provide details about what happened and contact information. You can email the committee directly. You can email um, a third party ombudsman, um, Ken McDonald at confidentialcarpentries.com. He's not a member of the staff, uh, the executive council or the code of conduct committee. Um, but he's an independent third party that can take reports or you can directly email the executive director of the carpentries, Dr. Carrie Jordan. <laughs> So in addition to the reporting guidelines, the code of conduct document um, contains the enforcement guidelines, which specify how the code of conduct committee acts on one of these reports. Um, so we have a reporter, the person who's reporting the incident, a report E, um, the person being reported whose behavior may have violated the COC. Um, the Code of Conduct Committee will strike an incident response group, so a subset of the committee that's focused on handling that specific event, um, and then there'll be a lead for that group who's responsible for um, the timelines and making sure that the event is, is, or the report is dealt with in a timely way. So the main purpose of the Carpentries Code of Conduct Committee is to establish, maintain, uphold the Code of Conduct. Um, and so one of the primary ways that we do this is by being the group that handles incident response reports. Um, but it also it has an educational role um, for educating members of the community um, about the policies and behaviors that create the kind of welcoming and inclusive environment that we expect to see and hope to see and hope to build in the communities. Um, and you know, more broadly to protect the members of the, of the Carpentries from harm in our community spaces. So current things that the Code of Conduct Committee is working on, um, we're developing sort of better procedures for onboarding and offboarding of members. Um, an important part of that is training. Um, so looking at uh, providing Code of Conduct training to the people on the committee, um, to playing scenarios as part of our regular discussions so that we are always thinking about things that may happen that have happened in other communities, discussing those. Um, in developing the new Code of Conduct Facilitators program um, that's just being launched right now, 
and ensuring that members have appropriate access to all of the Code of Conduct Committee platforms. Um, and a big part of that is confidentiality and ensuring that incident response or incident reports um, remain confidential and are only, that information is only accessible to the people who need access to it. Um, we do ongoing liaison with the community, with staff, with the Executive Council. Um, we maintain the code of conduct documents. And so the last role of the COC in general is just to um, maintain and develop and constantly revise the, the procedures for the code of conduct in dealing with reports. So ensuring confidentiality um, while also ensuring appropriate levels of transparency. So with that all being said, the code of conduct committee is recruiting new members. So we're looking for three or four people to join that committee. Um, if you're someone who's passionate about community to be a welcoming space um, for anyone who wants to join. And if you have time to dedicate to the Code of Conduct Committee um, and bring a diverse opinion and background to that committee, um, we'd certainly welcome your application. There's an application form there. Um, and there's more information in a blog post in June about the committee and about the recruitment. So thank you.